Hey, it's Sol with another video. Today I want to take you on a short trip to a few places in the world of Warcraft that look like they could have been used for some sort of content, but well, apparently it never came to be. WoW is a massive, massive game, full of places to discover and things to do, but that doesn't necessarily go hand in hand. Sometimes ideas don't pan out, deadlines aren't met, and projects are cancelled midway, but some of the assets in-game still exist. Instead of hidden locations that need tools or exploits to access though, we'll look at spots that are right out in the open, perfectly accessible to players today, and I'll speculate on what could or should have been going on here. This first video will focus mostly on the Legion expansion. If I do future videos, I'll cover other expansions including, of course, Classic WoW, which I think might need multiple episodes just for that. So let's get started. Our first stop is in Northern High Mountain, and just east of where you perform the Enigmatic World Quest, dive into the water. Underneath, you'll find some Night Elf ruins that are a bit more elaborate than what you normally see underwater in the Broken Isles. There's a few clickable shells around, and these grant underwater breathing and swim speed. There are these interesting torches that burn under the water and other interesting doodads. And then there's this NPC, the Salty Kraken, waiting for someone to engage it. It has the attributes of an elite rare, but here's the thing. It doesn't fight back, it doesn't move from its location, and it doesn't have loot. So what is this place? I think it could have been multiple things. Since we're in High Mountain, it's possible that this could have been another murloc-infested world quest area. It could be a far-off outpost for the Naga, and the Salty Kraken is just another rare spawn allied with them. Maybe it's a sign of things to come. It could be future content, however, this location has been here since the Legion Alpha. Moving on, our next stop takes us to the cliffs in Northern Suramar, as you take the path into Stormheim. Above you, notice those red Stormwind Drakes. They're flying in and out of a cave, or, or a dest, or a den, or whatever you call it. This is one of the only areas in the Broken Isles that is not accessible unless you could fly or have a glider, which also has NPCs you can interact with, as in these drakes. I'm pretty sure this was meant to be for something, but the idea was scrapped, and here's why. The drakes here fly around and everything, but they don't drop loot, and that's usually a sign. But also, notice from where I'm standing, the other side of this cave is the open sky. Actually, it's not. As I walk further in, you'll see an entire cliffside just pop in. There's also a second cave where the same thing occurs. It's just a visual bug, nothing that's going to crash the game or anything, but my inner QA tester tells me that this is a minor bug that went unfixed. That's because there isn't anything important to be done here, and because of that, pretty much no reason for a player to visit this area and encounter the bug. However, you can also see that the minimap changes to the interior of both of these caves, so this must have been something at one point. Although today, only a little bit more than ambience. I think that there might have been something related here that would eventually earn us these Stormwind Drakes, instead of it coming from a random box. What's interesting is that we're well within the proximity of Suramar and not Stormheim, which is where you typically see these drakes. More funny is that one cave is within the Suramar zone area, while the other is considered in the Stormheim area as soon as I enter it. Maybe at one point, obtaining the Stormwind Drakes involved another faction altogether, just related to obtaining this mount. Who knows? Next, we're going down to the Broken Shore, and then to the east until we pass Arcaris, the Death Knight Order Hall. And by the way, I do not know how to pronounce that name. Anyway, the pathetic scraps of dirt that you see below are called the Veiled Isles, which has a population of one. The one NPC here is called Hellshell, who apparently exists just to die and give you a PvP item, the Salt Hardened Shell. Maybe the purpose of the Veiled Isles is to give this turtle a place to graze, but I'm not entirely convinced. It makes me wonder why Team Death Knight decided to park themselves here and so close to the Broken Shore on top of that. Part of me thinks that the Veiled Isles might be a part of an Order Hall quest, involving the Death Knights trying to assault the Broken Shore from that staging area. But with how we've seen some cross-order shenanigans between the Death Knights and the Paladins, Maybe a previous version of some class's questline brought players here to support, or maybe even bring down Arcurus itself. There's more to this though. Even further to the east of the Veiled Isles are ruins under the water. Not elven ruins though, but what looks like busted Jinyu buildings. Now how the heck did this get here? As far as I know, there aren't any Jinyu living on the Wandering Isle, which could have had Jinyu living on its back and maybe the house fell down or something like that. So this leads me to believe that this building sunk to the bottom of the ocean at the time of the Great Sundering of Greater Kalimdor. You know, 10,000 years ago, Well of Eternity, that sort of thing. So this could be a glimpse at where Pandaria was when this occurred, 
It also explains the name of these Veiled Isles, Veiled having a lot to do with Pandaria being shrouded or Veiled in Mist, all to escape the Sundry. Anyway, that almost makes this more of an easter egg more than a sign of possibly cut or cancelled content, but you know, it's fun to speculate. As a bonus, do this. Fly close enough to the Death Knight Helicarrier if you want to take a ride on the fastest mount in Azeroth. Now let's head way west, off the coast of southwest Azuna. And there on the waters, you see a few rock outcroppings that, by itself, is already a little bit unusual. But hey, it's the Broken Isles, and I guess maybe Blizzard can get away with that. But what in the world explains this? There's over a dozen NPCs just hanging out here. When I saw this, I found it kind of unusual. Not often do you see this sort of density, and these mobs aren't strong at all, but they're not critters either. It's just weird. I think there could have been something rare that spawns here. It could be a battle pet, or a mob meant for a specific quest. Oh, and so you know, all I got from killing these things were some eggs and some Veiled Argonite thanks to my shoulder enchant. Exciting, yes, I know. Our last stop for today takes us away from the Broken Isles, and out to Draenor. The Warlords of Draenor expansion has received almost endless criticism, including the feeling that there's so much wasted potential in these zones. I'm going to highlight one such location over at Gorgrond. North of Blackrock Foundry, past the wastelands and the machinery and the iron savage something something, is Broken Horn Village. This is home to numerous orc NPCs from the Laughing Skull faction, who have almost no presence in the Gorgon storyline except in the form of a ruined village, and one guy, who dies anyway. This one village speaks more to me than, say, Shatrath or that Bladespire slash Karabor faction hub debate when it comes to content that Blizzard starts developing and then suddenly stops. It's pretty obvious that a full-on questline would have brought us to this village, and may have set up a proper narrative that leads players to Blackrock Foundry. After all, it has useful NPCs and named ones too, so there was probably a questline already set up. This is a village stuck in time, and we can only speculate on their story. Is anyone ever going to bind that Dead Meets Inn? Who's going to pace around with Split Grin? Is someone going to melt down this grunt and make him into a weapon? Or a piece of armor? Was I supposed to get a mount from the trading house? Or this guy? And I don't know what these ladies are doing, they're either bathing him or they're going to cook him. Poor crow feeder Zanny. I know you can repair my gear and everything, but I guess I'd rather just watch you, you know, hammer stuff. It's a real bummer. There's a lot of World of Warcraft stories that will never see the light of day. But what makes the Broken Horn Village even more tragic is that, figuratively, we're looking through a window. This is just the beginning of what could have been. Unfortunately, it's also the end. So that's going to be it for today. I really hope you liked this video, and if you did, like and subscribe so you can see future episodes. I want to thank everyone on stream for helping inspire this idea. And if you know of any odd places anywhere in the world of Warcraft that you think should have a purpose, let me know in a comment. I'll showcase it, and I'll make sure you get credit for helping out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy.